Hey there, guys. Today I want to talk about my second go at working with clay since the first one wasn't very productive. I bought Russian clay produced by Sonet from Leonardo's art store, which turned out to be a total nightmare that made me suffer. It just fell apart, didn't keep a shape. And the stuff that got baked simply fell apart as well. I was about to throw in the towel, but I decided to give clay a second chance and got two new ones from Leonardo, a Korean and a Spanish one. And it's just beyond amazing. This stuff is dreamy because it's soft. It flexes just right. It follows your movements and retains the imprints you make. If something's not sticking well, you can moisten your finger with water. Like I do here, you add clay and create a texture. I chose self-hardening clay, which dries in the air and sun on its own. The instructions say it dries within three hours, but some artists I looked up online suggest you should dry even air-dry clay in an oven. For those who want to create fuller, rounder shapes, it's not necessary to shape the entire body from clay all at once. Create a base from, say, foil, paper, or any other material where you can shape the clay on top and ensure that the clay layer isn't too thick, otherwise it might not dry or bake properly and might fall apart. My original goal is to make a clay mold from which I will subsequently craft a silicon mold, which will then be filled with epoxy resin to create a toy. Epoxy resin, did you get that? Yeah, there's plenty out there. Yes, plenty. With the year of the dragon approaching fast, and I can't find any dragon figures I like, I decided to collaborate with a master mold maker to try and create a silicone mold. Beginning with this. Another thing, guys, when making my first base and first figure, I didn't have these wooden stick things. I'm not entirely sure what they're accurately called, but they're special tools that make work a pleasure. Instead, I improvised using my hands and nails, but these spatula like tools are really handy. They're great for attaching pieces and shaping different bulging elements. If you need something detailed, it's superb. I noticed with this clay, all parts stick together, as I mentioned earlier, with water. That is, before laying a piece, moisten it, then attach that piece. Then press it against and it sticks really well. Something else that's super cool. When the clay dries, it can be beautifully filed and sanded. It sands so easily, I just broke out my manicure machine and crafted details using the drill bit. So if you want to create intricate patterns, don't stress about getting it perfect from the outset. Establish the basic shape and let it dry. If you have a Dremel tool or a manicure machine with different bits, you can even buy some. They're readily available in any nail section or for dentists. They also have various cost-effective bits. You can easily buy any texture bits and create the pattern you want when the figure... I put it in the oven. I have different ones for different things. I also have more stories and things to show you if you're interested, like how I also created a base for the mold with two dragons whose tails are shaped like a heart. After the figures dried, I baked them at 180 degrees for half an hour, then let them cool for a couple of hours. And now look, guys, if you're making a figure just for yourself, you can cover it with acrylic paint and seal it with an acrylic lacquer. But since I'm making a base for a mold, I need the surface to be very smooth and durable. Unfortunately, lacquer won't provide enough strength. Right now, I'm applying a base coat of nail polish. I'll also be using gel polish to add details and color to the kids' figurines. I've bought the cheapest gel polishes, so they're all the same price. 
You know, it would have been cheaper to use acrylic paint, but nah, the gel polish gives me the benefit of several layers of durability, shiny gloss, and more solid color than acrylic. Plus, gel polishes are self-leveling, so the color is smooth. You apply it, and it's perfectly even. Unfortunately, you don't get that with acrylic. You have to apply several layers of acrylic by yourself for it to level out. But just one layer of gel polish is enough. And because these figures are prepped for silicone molds, they didn't really have to be painted, but I wanted them to look aesthetic and pretty to work with. I decided to add colors to them because this will serve as the basis for our mold and the figure itself. It needs to be sturdy and hold up well. If you leave the clay as it is, it will crumble, unfortunately. But if you're doing this just for yourself, say for a Christmas decoration or an ornament, all you need is to prime it with lacquer, paint over with acrylic, and seal it with lacquer. That should be enough to preserve the figure's shape. After I applied color with gel polish, I started to experiment. FYI, it was my first time trying out vertical resin. There's this product called epoxy resin. There's building, artistic, jewelry, and vertical epoxy resin. Vertical resin is for vertical surfaces, meaning you can apply it upright. It's a brilliant invention, especially for creating toys, because those who've worked with liquid resin know it tends to drip off the surface. But thanks to vertical resin, these figures were possible. Look at these cuties! I applied a layer of vertical epoxy resin from a company called Resident Pro, used a torch to get rid of bubbles, and let it set. So there you go, I didn't really bake them. I just formed these figures with resin, and they're solid. They're in good shape and ready to be used for creating silicone molds that can fit any bottle shape. Anticipating a question which was asked on my Instagram. Do these figures fit all bottles? Yes, they fit all the bottles I have at home. So if all goes well, and I hope it does, we'll have these resin figures. Have a great day, everyone.